Welding repairs are some of the best things that you can take on as a professional or an amateur welder. The reason why? Well, aside from getting a few extra bucks cash in your pocket from time to time, they often present some really significant challenges that help you advance your skill set. Now today, we got an old busted Harley pipe, or at least it was busted and we fixed it. But that's not the hard part. The hard part was that it was massively broken, severely fatigued, and extremely thin in this area. We had holes to cover, we had gaps to bridge, we had a lot of technique that we had to throw in there, and I got all of it on this video. Check this out. This is exhaust junk, carbon buildup, deposits, etc. Not stuff we want in there. This is a fractured edge, and if we look close, it looks like there was a weld repair on it once already. This is just another fractured edge, which is eh, not really too problematic, but this is problematic. That's a fractured edge with another piece about ready to break. And these two pieces are what all of that can be found on, and these two pieces need to be stuck right back together again. So, step one, remove all of the exhaust junk. That would be all of the carbon buildup, that would be all of the uh, material inside that gets deposited from the exhaust burning off of it. Now, this is a relatively old exhaust. Uh, muffler, pipe, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's been fit to a Harley for who knows how many years, and you see that weld on the inside that we found earlier looks like it might have been repaired before. So we don't necessarily know the condition of the actual metal, how old it is, how cycled it is, uh, you know, the heat cycle, everything else gets onto it. So it's going to be relatively difficult for us to, uh, to work on it. But either way you slice it, the best way to get the old exhaust junk off of there is to get something like a wire wheel or a brush or, any, you know, any Anything related to that, uh, grab a hold of some acetone and just basically scrub it out of there. Now, the result on this, considering that it is so old and it's been heat cycled and you know the deposits and everything build up, this is about as good as it's going to get on your finish on the inside. But as long as there's no extra junk, we're good to go. These welds, they may be a problem, but you never know because once we start welding into them, they might unearth some extra stuff. But either way, the way that this broke off was relatively easy. And, uh, and unique, but the other problem is coming right here. You see how thin it is? I just literally blew a hole right through it, but I got a pretty good solid tack down on it, so let's get it flipped over and we'll get the other tack welds. You son of a <sighs> Okay, let's try this again. All right, the biggest thing that uh, kind of held it uh, back from uh, getting a solid tack weld down there is the chrome is still on it, so the we can't really clean it because we don't want to take any of the metal away or damage that edge because it locks in so well. So it may take a little bit of patience to uh, fight this and get it uh, get a nice solid tack on it. So I did get a good tack down on there. I'm grabbing some filler rod now and uh, just trying to blast this together without blowing too many holes in it. But a little bit of pedal pulse is kind of helpful. And, uh, of course, grabbing the filler rod, that is uh, also very helpful because that's part of our technique to, uh, to weld it is with a constant flow of filler. And you'll see that here in just a second so a few really good strong tack welds is exactly what I need and I just filled that hole in but we'll show you how to do that now this is a green surface prep pad arranged in a, a flap disc essentially now it's fantastic for stripping down just uh, things like chrome or very fine amounts of metal uh, it's it's a really fantastic deal unfortunately they don't last long so you got to buy them in uh, multiple packs I do have a link in the description below if you want to check those out and find some it goes you know right over to Amazon where I get them from but it was it was doing a pretty good job at stripping down the chrome, but it looks like this has actually been re-chromed a few times, maybe once or twice, but some of the layers off the top are stripping off, but you can see another layer right down below that, and it's going to need something a little heavier. That's why I grabbed a hold of the wire wheel. So here's basically what we need to do after we get all of this stripped off. We essentially need to strike an arc, and we're talking a minimal amount of amperage that goes into this. It's already starting to blow away uh, some of those edges there, but we need to basically fill or keep the uh, filler rod basically buried in there and we're going to just blob it up and we're going to make a massive pile of snot essentially. The idea here is to kind of regulate the amount of heat that goes into it and keep the filler rod in there so that way we can we can get it to a almost liquid state and kind of mess with it. We can use the torch to push it around. Now you can try this at home uh, when you do this. You just kind of just kind of get it somewhat melted and uh, just kind of push and uh, move it around. But since it did go on relatively cold, we need to hit it with a little bit higher heat in order to blend it and kind of form it and uh, let it wash out 
into the actual uh, uh, two metals that we have to weld together. Now this is again very low amperage. We're not going any more than about 50, maybe 55 amps tops. I set the machine to 60 total and I didn't step on the pedal all the way. So it is very, uh, very easy going on the amperage. I'm also using a very blunt uh, grind on the tungsten there, not very sharp at all. I, I need that, that small arc cone and a great deal of focus on it. So this is a hole that we have to tackle and it is actually relatively large. But the best way to do this is to initiate your arc somewhere on a thicker spot where you have lots of uh, base metal there. And I'm going to build up a small edge, a little beaded edge, a very, very low amperage again, just enough to get it to ball up and just kind of stick to the end there. I'm going to do this on one side. In this case, you see it on your left. And if we look carefully, we still have that hole right down below. Now the idea is we build up enough metal to kind of stick to where we can add some heat or we can actually heat it up without it uh, blowing that edge away even further. And this is really important uh, when it comes to filling in holes or kind of building a bridge over them. So as soon as I have that set up there with that one edge beaded up here, I'm going to back it up, go right back to the beginning of it, and we're going to keep this filler rod essentially buried right there in the arc and concentrate on keeping that puddle in that state where it's not too hot and not too cold. It's 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 like a gooeyness that we can uh, we can work with on here. So as soon as I have it filled up on the opposite side there, I'm going to actually twist and kind of push it and maneuver it over to the other side what already has the metal on it. As soon as that's actually built up, it looks terrible. So we're going to run back over it, get a good blend, kind of a weave here, and just push all of this together so that way we know it's solid. And once again, I got to remind you, there's not a lot of heat going into this. It looks like a ton, and then we're going to kill it and all the rest of that good stuff. But this is this is borderline brazing. <laughs> there's actually not very much heat in it. Uh, this section has a pretty good fit up on it. We got a little little chunk missing down there, but that's that's not really going to be a problem. So this is just a simple lay wire job. Uh, pretty fair amount of heat going into it, keeping the filler rod at the ready, just fusing it, getting it concentrated into a big giant puddle and just kind of weaving and walking it over the top of it. Not too much heat to where we're at risk of blowing the edge out or blowing a hole in it or anything like that. It's just, it's very, very controlled is basically what it is. Now, another reason why you might have noticed the tungsten is pretty dirty, you see all that stuff that's just spitting out of there and firing away. That's all that bad metal that's on there that's old, fatigued, been heat cycled a hundred times, and this is steel too. There's all kinds of impurities, former weld junk, everything else that's gone in there. So we're not going to worry too much about keeping the tungsten clean. I know that's going to sound like you know the stupidest thing I've ever said, but realistically speaking, it's not going to hurt it. I mean, there's already more garbage inside of these welds and inside of these tubes here. All we really want to do is stick them back together. So now we got to start on an actual hole. Now the concentration of heat is going to be on that existing bead that's already there. That's where we're going to start out. But instead of edge building either one of these, I'm actually just going to just drop that filler rod in there. And we're going to literally push it. We're going to like force that filler rod into that puddle. And we're just going to keep it filled up and I'm going to keep on walking the torch back and forth. With that walking movement, I'm literally pushing the metal back and forth, which will basically build a bridge and solidify right over the top. Fair warning, these are some relatively unpleasant looking welds. But I mean, they hold. Brap. I really wish I wasn't in such a rush to get this part done. I could have gotten some close-ups of these welds, but you can actually kind of see how gnarly they are, even from these shots as we're cleaning them all up and inspecting. But the, the biggest thing, that they were, they were not by any means beautiful. They were not gorgeous. They were not stacks. They were not something to write home about it. They're not scoring points on the, all the big welding uh, social media pages. They're just straight up welds. Some of them fat, some of them narrow. All we really need to do is make them hold. That's it. Well, that about wraps it up for this one. I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, hope this kind of helps you out, maybe give you some insight on how to tackle a job like this or maybe inspire you to take on a job like this that would normally be, uh, well, a nightmare just looking at it. I mean, it's, it's difficult. But either way, maybe you'll score some extra coin. And, of course, keep on learning. That's what exactly what we want to do here. So if you need to get in touch with us, you can head over to the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator or Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series. Now make sure you subscribe and ring that bell because we got some really awesome stuff going on in the YouTube community tab over there on the TFS page. You'll definitely want to be a part of that one. I want to thank you guys for watching as always. 
See you guys on the next episode.